Hello everyone, this video and the next three are for anyone who wants to learn more about the computer science course that is offered at the University of Cambridge. First you have three years for a bachelor degree and one year for masters, so four years for videos looking into the course structure. Let's go! I prepared this lovely table which is not yet filled but will be over the course of the next four videos. In this video we will only consider the first box, so let me go ahead and get the other three out of the way. For now they are black boxes for us. And let's dive deeper into what Cambridge Tripos is. A quick Google search brings us to this lovely page on Wikipedia, from which we learned that Cambridge Tripos is a word used to describe exams and courses that you take at Cambridge during your undergraduate years, after which you get a bachelor's degree. Sometimes you will see things like CST or NST, and they will stand for Computer Science Tripos and natural science tripos. Obscure etymology, but I like to think of it as three parts. So we have part one, part two and part three. Now it would be amazing if they actually corresponded to three years, but they don't. For the computer science course, the division is actually the following. What's worse is that even within Cambridge, it all differs by course. So for computer scientists, the four years end up being part 1A, 1B, 2 and 3. Whereas for engineers, it's 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. Economists have it as part 1, 2A and 2B and so on. Which is why it's not always clear which year you mean if you use parts. But this is how it's described on our course webpage, so I wanted to mention it for you all to understand. Going back to our table, these columns can now also be called part 1A, 1B, 2 and 3. What does part 1A have to offer? Broadly speaking, a range of modules which provide an introduction to the field of computer science, starting from the very basics of what's inside the computer, how memory works, what's an operating system, how does your laptop display anything using graphics, how to design software, and how to store information in databases. And of course, not to bore you to death with theory, there is some programming in the form of OP using Java and functional programming using OCaml. That, I think, is in comparison to Haskell that Imperial and Oxford use. So these are all the courses that there are in year one or part 1A. Not that many, so let's go through them. The first group that I can immediately see is the practical group. Cambridge CS course is very theoretical and you can straight away say that this is not an electric engineering or programming degree. Let's color in light blue all the practical modules. Digital electronics. This is actually a purely theoretical course but it acts as a prerequisite for the low-level hardware course with practicals, so there is some sort of dependency between the two. The kind of theory it teaches you is what logic gates and transistors are, how our computers and digital clocks use them and flip-flops, how to build circuits. Then in the actual hardware classes, you use that theory and some workbook material to build actual circuits using the boards, resistors and other lab equipment. There are six workshops, each dedicated to completing some tasks, you work in pairs and at the end it's just pass or fail, but pretty much everyone is expected to pass. OOP is that Java course I was talking about before. It's not called Java because Java is simply used as a tool to demonstrate OOP concepts. On the other hand, scientific programming is an attempt to teach people how to write simple scripts for many other future projects without creating 55 Java classes. Plus, remember that physicists can take some of these modules too. This module is pretty useful for them with their scientific simulations. Oh, and that foundation of CS course is the one using OCaml. Similarly to OOP and Java, it's not about learning that language and being proficient in it, it's about learning the concepts and using the language to introduce examples. So don't have any expectations of being able to use the language freely and confidently afterwards without the additional practice. Now, in green, I will highlight the most useful meaty courses that affect your future years and the information from which you might use in the real world. Crazy, I know. Database course, used to be in the second year actually, covers the theory behind different types of information story. Row-based sequential, graph-based, document-based. There are also three exercises to do with those, but each is about 5-10 lines of code, not a big deal. Discrete mathematics, not actual mathematics like in high school, do not be fooled. This one teaches you logic and proving techniques. For example, Boolean algebra, which is actually useful for those logic gates in hardware. Also topics like sets and probabilities. Think advanced Venn diagrams. Graphics, also used to be in second year. Teaches you about rendering scenes, creating models, how lighting works for different surfaces. That course ruined my aspiration to work for Pixar or Disney. Sad. 
algorithms, probably the most useful course for the real world coding. You will learn the things that I actually asked during tech interviews. But hey, this is your first year, so you'll forget it all by the end of third. You're welcome. But if by the end of this course you don't know 100 ways to sort an array, did you even set the course? Highly recommend the algorithms bible. All that stuff about analyzing how complex your algorithm is and which data structure is best to use will come in handy one day. Machine learning in first year. What an absolute joke. Totally made for hype. Guess when we had our first ML lecture? Third term of second year. And that continued into our third year. You can tell that it was made for hype if you look at the syllabus and you don't understand any words, but they sound cool. These are very hard topics that most of us learned in third year, and now they are actually introduced to anyone without any prior knowledge of computer science. I'm not gonna make this course green, because this is just too much and too early and out of place if you ask me. Operating systems. Finally, you'll be able to have heated debates and holy wars with your mates about whether to use Windows or Linux while most of your friends will be loudly typing on their MacBooks. This is where you learn how your computer schedules tasks to pretend it's doing multiple things at the same time and why Google Chrome eats all your RAM and what RAM even is if you are on my level of understanding computer science. The rest will be orange, hyped up or waffly courses that are just there because other lecturers have unnecessarily flown by at double speed, leaving you with a lot of extra time for this useless nonsense. Interaction design. You can tell this course will be sad because there is a group presentation at the end. Pray your teammates are the kind of people who leave their rooms and show up at lectures, otherwise you will be that one person who will do all the work and get 20% of the praise. Also, we see cool words like case studies and the industry. This happens when the course is trying to be more applied than it actually is. It's fun learning from someone else's mistakes, but reading about history doesn't get absorbed in the same way as doing things. So this is probably what the group project part is for. The course is under the HCI umbrella, human-computer interaction. Kind of psychology-based, but also pretty woefully at times. Numerical analysis has got to be the most painful course of my whole degree. I have never experienced something so badly taught and listening to other students in years down below saying the exact same thing makes me sad that things are not changing. The course is actually pretty useful, especially in the scientific area, so for physicists and other scientists who have to code up their simulations and need to know the limitations of the real-world computation versus their precise values and solutions on paper. This course is about learning how floats and matrices are represented in binary, how iterative algorithms work and when they stop software and security engineering. Many words in the name of the course tell you there will be many words when it comes to answer essay-based questions for it. It's yet another one of those interaction design modules where you talk about requirements for projects, predicting user behavior, bugs are always fun to learn about, gives you the scale on which programmers manage to fail and oh wow it's big, software life cycles, more theory to learn about the things you will not be creating for years and your employer will probably be into agile and scrum anyway. So what's the point of this? Not sure. There is even project planning in your first year, something that managers in companies can't even do properly sometimes. Basically, this course is for future project managers with a mix of case studies, theory and definitions you'll forget the next year. Reminder that in your first year you'll have three quarters computer science and one quarter maths and this is reflected in the exam structure. We have three exams at the end of the year for each quarter and maths exams are taken from the natural science tripos. It is pretty ironic that we get no answers to our worksheets, but they provide the super detailed analytics of our exam performance. Here we have the number of attempts per question. The sum of attempts per section is 160, so clearly there were that many people in that year group. This column is a median mark for each question, which is out of 20. Some of them are nice and high, around 70%, Others are pretty low, like this 11 out of 20. Talking about that unbearable course, if you remember. In section D, you had to answer two questions, by the way, because algorithms, discrete maths and ML were the biggest courses, and they had a lot of material to test. Here we have something that's considered very high, 16 out of 20. So 50% of the people got at least 80% of the question correct, whereas this was way too low. People could barely get above 40%. Paper 1 had all the programming and algorithms, Paper 2 is all the applied hardware, 
and paper three is the rest. Sadly, this means that if you hated or were just bad at one of those areas, you were completely screwed for one of the papers. In total, you had to answer five questions in these three exams. Each question is worth 20 marks, which is how you get marks out of 100. Maths is broken very weirdly. There are two big three hour long exams, but each one is worth only less than half of the whole maths quarter, and hence even less of your total first year computer science mark. And 7.7% .7 is given to maths practicals, which are really just more scientific programming classes. Here are my results in first year for maths. So finally, we have uncovered the first column in my table of the computer science Cambridge Tripos. Stay tuned for three more videos where I talk about parts 1B, 2 and 3. Bye!